Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing today? Happy Sunday. Are you guys having a good Sunday? Well, some of you are probably watching this on Monday, so you're probably starting your week. So if you're watching this on Sunday, I hope that you are getting relaxed, renewed, refreshed, and rejuvenated for the week ahead. And if you're uh, watching this on Monday morning while you are starting your week, I hope that you have the most magically amazing, fantastic week ever. Uh, my allergies are off the charts today. I was actually just going to look up on the Weather Channel to see what the pollen count is um, because the last two days, my allergies have just been off the charts. I've been taking my uh, allergy medicine. Alex has been taking his allergy medicine, and both of us, like, our allergies are just off the charts. I was talking to one of my neighbors, and they were saying the same thing. They were like, oh, my gosh. It's like, our allergies are so bad. Um, so I wanted to look on here. Uh, time and temperature. <laughs> I keep on biting my tongue on the vlog. Time and temperature check. It is currently 419 p.m. on Sunday afternoon. It is very, very warm today. I think it was like 84 or 85 when we were uh, coming back from brunch in the car. And the temperature is currently, oh, it's 88 degrees and sunny. I want to look on here and see what the, uh, the pollen count is, if it shows on here. Okay, let's see. I can't remember. Oh, allergies. Look at this. It shows all the allergies are in like orange and yellow. And, um... Today is medium, it says, but then tomorrow and Tuesday, it's like in the high. So you can go over here and you can pull up everything. There is a moderate risk of allergy symptoms today. Okay, that's just not the case because I am really struggling. Today's primary contributor is ragweed, which is what I am allergic to. Um, ragweed, tree, and grass. Okay, yeah. Allergies are bad for me today. They're like moderate all week long, but tomorrow and Tuesday, they're like really, really high. So, yay! Can't wait to look forward to that. Um, I've actually been taking my allergy medicine. So I take aloe vera, which is just like this little thing that like melts on your tongue. And I take it when I get up in the morning, but I've also been taking one like later at night, like around 11 or 12, because I just, I mean, I'm constantly sneezing. I have Kleenex in my pocket at any given time. Um, so yeah, it is full on allergy season in the Midwest and in Indiana. So, but anyway, how are you guys doing today? Um, I actually filmed some videos today other than my vlog. <laughs> I didn't really, I keep on saying I'm not going to, and then I get really excited about it. So what happened was, what had happened was, um, that I, um, have been getting all this stuff in the, the mail. Well, I mean, on the front porch that I had, uh, Hey, how are you? Y'all going to the pool party? You are? Are you going? You're going right. It doesn't start till five. Oh, okay. That's my neighbors that were in Europe. Are you going? Why are you going so early? What? Oh, you're setting up. What side are you bringing? What's Texas caviar? Okay, a dip. Does that have mayonnaise in it? No. <laughs> I think I am going to pop up to the pool party here. Um, for just, I'll just go up there for like 15 or 20 minutes. I know my husband has no desire to go, but I'll go. I know, I know, I mean, I know some of the people in the neighborhood. I, I know actually more people in the neighborhood than I think that I know. Um, so everybody keeps on walking by and they're like, you got to go to the party. So I'm going to pop by for just a little bit. Um, it's a beautiful day and there's no reason not to walk up there and just say hi to everybody and stuff like that. So... It was so funny. Um, I didn't even think about this. It was so funny because earlier last week I was telling, I think it was on this channel that I was telling the story about Alex's mom and how she, I don't even remember what video it was on, if, you, if it was even on a vlog. But Alex's mom, like, when, like, we first started dating, we, like, took her to some stuff. And then, like, our friend's house, like, he had a, a pool and he had, like, this pool party and she really wanted to swim. And so she just, like, towards the end, she acted like she, like, just kind of fell into the pool. And then she was, like, swimming in her, like, jeans and her shirt. And, like, other people got into and stuff like that. 
But Alex said something about like when my mom wants to swim and nobody else is swimming, she just acts like she falls in the pool or something. I can't remember how he said it, but anyway. And it was so funny because somebody commented on my video about the annual pool party and they said on my vlog, so whoever you are, I loved this comment. They said, you should just go up to the annual pool party and act like you, like Alex's mom, like you just fell into the pool. And I was like, that's actually a really smart idea. Then I could swim at the pool party. I could get my last swim in, but I, I, I this is not the crowd, okay? Everybody loved it when Alex's mom did it. They thought it was so like, I mean, it was literally like, you know, a movie moment or something like that. But no, it wouldn't, I, I don't think I would have the same reaction. I think they'd be like, you need to get out of that pool. That's a violation. <laughs> so anyway, okay, so this is what happened. So we got back from brunch today and um, I have all this stuff in the kitchen. I mean, it's like literally taking over the chair, the white chair, and then I have this basket on there um, with stuff that to like, well, now the stuff to review is in our pantry. So I have on my list, I have a list of all the stuff that I need to do this week. And one of it is that I, one of the things I have to do is I have to go through and I have to rearrange the entire pantry. Because like the top is like Alex's treats. The next one is like our combined food, like soups and stuff like that. And then the next one is like, I don't really have any treats. So the top one was our treats together, like our snacks. But like, it's just his stuff now because I don't really have snacks. And then the, the third shelf down is like all stuff for review. But... Often, like, I'll review something, and then, like, I will fold it over and, like, put a clip on it, and I put it up in Alex's section, like, if it's, like, the spicy, t like, Takis and whatever, but then he'll move it down to my review section because he doesn't want it, and so I've got, I've got, like, five or six things down there, and it's all just kind of, like, shoved in there, and then the bottom part is where we keep, like, um, paper towels, and we keep, like, uh, the trash bags and stuff, and I have tons of stuff down there, too, to review. I just, like, when I get it, I just, like, put it down there so it's just, like, hidden away. I've got to go down there. I have some plastic um, containers in the basement, so I'm going to pull one of them up, and ever, all the food stuff to review, I'm going to put it in a plastic container with, a, like, a, a lid on it and put it in the garage for safekeeping, because a lot of it's, like, cereal and snacks and stuff like that. It's nothing that will melt or get bad or anything like that, and I'm just going to put it in the garage, and then I can just go out to the garage, and our pantry will be clean. But to the left, I have all this stuff that, like, I ordered, like, shoes and sweatshirts, my lucky stuff that I ordered. And so it's just kind of piling up over there because I want to show it in the hall, right? And so one of the things that I, I'd ordered, like, four of these books with a book, uh, date, uh, books with a date. I don't know if you guys have seen these. I think I talked about it yesterday in my vlog where it's, like, they have a bunch of them on Etsy. So the first time I ever saw this was actually, I think it, I may have seen it before this, but the first time I saw it in person was when I was, the first time I went to go visit Mel. And she took me to this uh, bookstore. I think the bookstore was called like Bookman's or something. It's like this used bookstore. It's huge. It's so cool. When we were out there uh, last year, Mel and Nikki and I, we all three went out there and looked at it. Um, and so when we walked in, I don't know if they had it the last time, but the first time we went out there, when you, we walked in, they had this table, and it was like date with a book. But the, the books were just wrapped in like wrapping paper, and then it would say like, I had like a name tag or something. I can't remember how they did it. I did, I did a whole video about it, but it said like, hello, my name is a mystery or whatever. You could pick whatever kind of book you want, and then you just paid like $8 for it or something. Well, now they have these extravagant like setups where you get like, the one I got today... It was $25, and you didn't really get a whole lot for $25 except for this book. But anyway, it was still the, the concept of school. It was fun, you know? And I love unboxings and stuff like that, so it was fun. So I actually ordered four of them online. This was, like, mid-range. I think I bought two that were between, like, $20 and $30. And then I bought the most expensive one that I could find because I wanted to see if it was worth it. It comes with, like, a candle and all this kind of stuff. It was, like, $45 or $50. And then I bought one that was, like, $12.99. So this one came, and it came yesterday, I think. And, um... So I thought that would be like a good video to do on a Sunday. And I know people are going to be like, why aren't you doing this on your booktube channel? Because I want more people to be exposed to this. And if I put it on my booktube channel, not that many people will see it. And so I'm, I'm doing the unboxings on my Peter Does Stuff channel. And then I'm going to show all the books on my booktube channel as like a haul with other, some other spooky books that I have purchased for this fall as well. Um, so I'm going to show it like over there as a haul. But anyway, so I wanted to do that video. Well, I did that video... So we came home, and, like, Alex took Boo Radley out. Al Boo Radley is, I mean, first of all, I just want to say, there's so many people that are like, thank you for the Boo Radley updates and stuff like that. He is, like, wild child, okay? I don't know what that muscle relaxer is doing to him or if he just had a complete turnaround, but he is, like, it, zoomies are back. He is, like, running around at night. He is acting, like, crazy, playing like this and all this kind of stuff. I'll tell you about last night in a second, but... So Alex took him outside for like 20 minutes and he like ran around and whatever. 
and I filmed my first video. So then when Alex came inside, he gave him like a tree, and then he like when Alex was like, I'm gonna go upstairs and take a nap. He's like, I am super super tired. So Al he's like, I don't even know why I'm tired because Alex went to bed pretty early last night. So Alex went upstairs to go take a nap with Boo Radley, and I like I was like, do you care if I keep on filming? He was like, no, not at all. So I filmed a review video, <laughs> partly because I want to have one of these. I did sodas. I want to have one of these sodas tonight to watch Sister Wives as like a little special treat. Even though I just got on the way home, I've been craving ever since that Secret Lives of Sister Wives. I've been craving Fountain Pops so bad. So the other night I got one, and then I got this from Thornton's on the way home. So I never get 44 ounces, but the last few times I have, I usually get 32 ounces. But what's so weird about that was the other night, I showed it on here, I think, too. I got a 44-ounce Diet Dr. Pepper, and I ended up drinking, like, literally, like, just about half of it. And then I got, I just threw the rest of it out, because the ice smelled it, and then it was gross. Um, so I got a Diet, <laughs> Diet, uh... Pep, Diet Pepsi, because that's, they didn't have Diet Dr. Pepper, half their things were out, and I put, because I love the squirts of, like, <laughs> I don't usually do this, but because of that show, now I want, like, all the squirts of the different flavors in her, in there, so I put lemon in there, this, it's right at the top, I'll probably drink, like, this much of it and throw it out, because the ice will melt, Ooh, it I can taste the lemon in there, it tastes like a Diet Pepsi with, like, a slit, uh, like, a, a wedge of lemon in it, it's pretty good, I'll probably take it up to the, uh, <laughs> to the annual pool party, so anyway, the annual poo party. <laughs> so I got done with those two videos, and um, I knew that Alex wanted to turn on the fan and stuff like that to like take a nap. And I was like, you know what? I filmed so many videos this week. Mel had texted me because Mel and I have like a phone date every Sunday, and so she was like, "What kind of time can you talk?" And I was like, "Well, let me film my vlog, and then I'll call you." So. Because I've got, well, we'll talk about Sister Wives. I've had 11 episodes of Sister Wives until I'm completely done with the entire series so far. And then the premiere comes out at 8 o'clock tonight. I know, I might, I won't be watching at 8 o'clock. So, my plan is to get caught up on the entire, like, season 18, which is the last season they filmed. Watch all of that. Watch the reunion. And then, like, at 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning when it's, like, on HBO Max, whenever it comes out, I will watch. I'm also recording it, too. I'll watch, I'll watch the new episode of Sister Wives, and then tomorrow, so I'll just, like, be a continuation of what I've been doing. So I have actually 12 episodes of Sister Wives to watch. I can do it, because each episode is, like, 40 minutes, unless the premiere is, like, two hours. But I'll still be able to do it. I'll stay up if I have to. I can't even tell you how many episodes of Sister Wives I watched last night. I literally, I, like, took a very, very short nap, and then, like, I, I watched, like, four, I think it was four or five episodes, and then I took a nap for, like, 45 minutes, half an hour to 45 minutes, and then I got up, and I, like, binge-watched Sister Wise all last night. I don't even know how many episodes I watched. I, I have no idea. So, where I'm at right now, it's just a mess. I'm in, I'm halfway through season 18. I'm like, actually, I wrote it down last night. Da, 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 da. There's 20 episodes in season 18, and I am currently on... Oh, here's my notes on Sister Wives. I am cur There's all shows I've watched. I am currently on episode 10. And so I'm on episode 10 out of 20. So that means I have, yeah, 11 episodes left, and then 12 with the new episode. Um... So, anyway, so I got done doing the review, and I got done doing the Peter Does Stuff video, and then I was like, I'm just going to vlog. Because I was, I could, I was like, I've got a drama video I could do today. i got a Peter Wilson's video I could do today. I've got all these videos I could do today. And I was like, just, you know what? <laughs> you keep on saying you're going to take a day and not film any videos, and then you keep on filming videos. So I had fun filming those two videos. And now I'm having fun sitting here vlogging and talking to you guys, and then it's going to be a fun evening of binge-watching Sister Rise. I am kind of ready to be done with Sister Rise, if you want to know the truth. Um, like, not be done with it, done with it. Like, I'm ready to watch the new season. But as far as, like, watching it every night, like... I'm ready to be caught up. Um, I just don't know now what I'm going to binge watch next. Like, I've got to pick another show. Um, Alex and I were talking about it tonight. He really wants me to watch Tell, Tell Me Lies on HBO Max. He said people, he's like Car Caroline, everything, they get all their information off TikTok. He's like, everybody's making these reaction videos to TikTok and whatever. And I said, well, because he was talking about my Peter Watches TV channel. And he was like, you could do like reactions to Tell Me Lies and whatever. And I said, People seem to really like when I do more, like, true crime reality TV over there. They don't love when I do, like, other than, like, Baby Reindeer. Oh, my God, my friend, the other day, I have to show you this. My friend Allie, I did a video with her years ago. So, Allie and I have known each other since I was 18. And, um, I love Allie so much. Here she is on Instagram. So, Allie, um, 
she, she's, she's in movies and stuff like that. She was on that Bravo show called Freak Show, and she lives in L.A. I did a video with her, like, the first time I went to L.A., because Alex and I went out to lunch with her to the Ivy, because I had never been to the Ivy before. And then I did a video with her um, for my channel. She was, like, in a Logan Paul um, video. Like, he, like, hired her to be in a video. And she was on um, Little People Los Angeles. She's been in a bunch of things. It says on here, right, her, 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 her bio, her bio on Instagram. She's so famous. It says, Hulu, Better Things, AMC Freak Show, Lifetime, Little Women LA, SAG Actress, and Little Person Entertainer. So anyway, she was at a party, and she said, what a nice human being. Me and actor Richard Gadd, both leaving, she's so funny, both leaving. I remember going to raves with her back in the day. And there was this rave. It was she and I and our other friend that were really, really good friends. And um, who I'm still friends with today and still lives here. And so her son just graduated from college at IU. And um, we would go to these raves back in the day. And I can remember that there was this one rave that we went to. And there was like this old couch. Like you would walk in. And Allie always worked like the door at these raves. <laughs> I don't know why. She was also the coach at girl at CT Peppers here in town forever. And everybody knows her. Like if you ask people like, oh, do you know Allie? They're like, oh, she was the, the coach at girl at CT Peppers. They knew her forever. <laughs> like that's how she's known in Indianapolis. Um... I love Allie so much. And so, and we see her, she, she comes for Rev every year. We always see her for Rev and stuff like that. And so, we would sit, Allie and I and our other friend, that was like her best girlfriend, we would sit on this couch and Allie would like sell people, because you had to like do little tickets to get into raves. And so she would sell people these tickets to get into raves. And I can remember sitting there and I said, we could, because these raves were always called stupid stuff, right? It was like during the Club Kid era, like before that. And so people were trying to invent that. So they were always coming up with like these themes. So like, if, if, St if Steve Smith started a chain of raves, he would call them like, <clears throat> Steve's basement or something like that and so I can remember sitting out there and I was like girl we need to start a, a, like pr being promoting like we need to start promoting raves and we'll call it Allie's couch and we'll just take this couch with us to all these rave parties I remember you used to always say this but anyway she put on here she said me and actor Richard Gadd who was here's the picture she was the star he was the star of uh baby reindeer Leaving the same party and now in an elevator together. I explained that I'm a huge baby, a fan of baby reindeer. Duh, duh, who isn't? He asked if I was leaving and I said yes. I then went on about how I needed my rest so I could go to the WWE SmackDown tomorrow. The fact that he sat there and listened to my silly little story. Great guy and a phenomenal actor. She's so funny. And then here's her on the set of filming some stuff. I love her so much. She's so cool. There's her mom. I love her mom. So sweet. Um... Some other stuff with her. And she's so pretty. I love her so much. I love you, Allie. Anyway, I'm so happy for her. She's really good friends with Alex's cousin that lives in Las Vegas, too. Oh, my God. One time, she was back in town. This was, like, right after her. did she move to L.A.? I mean, she goes to, I mean, she is, like, friends with everybody. Like, she, back in the day, went to Paris Hilton's birthday parties. She's, like, party with Snoop Dogg. Like, she knows everybody in the industry. Like, everybody knows. She's just, like, everybody knows her and loves her. I love Allie so much. Anyway, oh my goodness, one time she came home. She and, Ale she and Alex and I went out, and she loves Alex, too. And, uh, God, it's so weird that we've known each other for so long. It's so crazy that she and I have known each other for so long. But anyway, um... Alex and she and I, Alex and I went out, and she always wanted to go back to Pepper. CT Peppers is this bar in Broad Ripple. Apparently, the way I say Broad Ripple, and people like, if you live in Indianapolis, everybody says Broad Ripple. It sounds like it just all slurs together. But people are like Broad. They like spell it out, and they're like equals Broad Ripple. It's B R O A D R I P P L E. Broad Ripple. And then there's Rocky Ripple, which is like another area that people live. It's like a neighborhood that people live in. Um... So there's like, and then, but people sometimes refer to Broad Ripple as just Ripple. <laughs> and now Broad Ripple High School, which is where my mom went, uh, we just went by there the other day, and it's now a middle school, which is crazy. But anyway, she came to town one time, and she always wanted to go to CT Peppers and say hi to everybody. I mean, you cannot go out with this girl in Indianapolis because she knows everybody everywhere. Like, literally everywhere she knows. You go out with her, and everyone's like, Allie, 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 Allie. It's so fun to go out with her. I miss her so much. Anyway, love you, Allie. So, 
I filmed those two videos and I was like, no, you're just gonna like take the rest of the day and just like relax and do your vlog, call Mel, and then you're gonna binge watch the hell out of Sister Wives and get it done. I'm sure I'll take a nap at some point. Um, so yeah. So got up today and I woke up with Boo Radley <laughs> standing over me, pawing at me, going, <laughs> It's so cute. I told Alex last night, I said, you know, I had this thought. I was telling him about what I said yesterday in the vlog about, like, you know, don't, like, I always think about, like, I wish I had, like, you know, one more day with my mom. And it was interesting because when I said that, and, like, Caroline and I said that, we were talking about that, a couple people were like, I wouldn't want one more day because then I knew, I would know that they were going to be gone again. I mean, with the idea of knowing that they're going to be gone again, I think I could, like, see my... In all honesty, I think I could see my mom again or my aunt or uncle and know that I'm only going to see them for a couple hours. Like, I've already, like, grieved through so much that I don't feel like it would bring up that whole grieving thing again. Just to, like, sit down. It would almost be, like, kind of an ethereal conversation with them, like, on a spiritual level. You know what I mean? But anyway, I was telling Alex about... You know, if we could just, like, have a few more moments. I mean, people wish for a few more moments, last moments all the time. And I was like, you know, I had this moment where I thought, like, we're getting that with Boo Radley. Because we thought it was over for Boo Radley, you know? And he's like, you know, I really never thought of it that way. He's like, we really are. And um, so now Alex is doing this thing that every time he takes him out, <laughs> he picks him up off the bed, comes over, and has Boo Radley. Lean, he puts, leans him down, and then Boo Radley kisses my face. <laughs> like, And then Alex kisses my face. It's so silly. But I love it. So anyway... Um, Burelli's been outside about 15 times today. He loves to, like, stand in the sunspot. So, like, out here, like, the tree, there's, like, shadows, but then there's, like, sunspots, you know, in the yard. And he, like, loves to just, like, like find the sunspots and then just stand. He just, like, goes up like that and just stands in it. And then he runs real quick. In the backyard or in the front yard, he loves it. Um, the leaves are coming down pretty quick, which is crazy. One of the trees over here, when we were coming back, I said, Alex, I mean, the tree is, like, almost all orange. No, these aren't. These are all green. But I was like, oh my god, like, it's, we're in the middle of September. It doesn't seem like we are, you know? But, like, before we know it, it's going to be October, then November. And then the pool will be opening again, and I can't wait. But anyway, so, um, I was telling Alex, it's, it's kind of weird how the universe works, you know? Because we were trying to come up with dates to go visit, like, Fufu and Jesse, and just none of the, we the dates were working because they have, like, this big birthday party they're going to. And so we were trying to figure out dates to do it. And then I had all these doctor's appointments and stuff this week. But this was actually the weekend that we were looking at going out there. And I said, it's so weird how the universe works. Because, like, we wouldn't have been able to end up going. Because Boo Radley's, you know, like, this was the week that all this stuff happened. Because we were going to go, like, Wednesday to, like, Monday or something like that. Um, and I'm so thankful, you know, like, in retrospect that we didn't plan that trip. Alex's mom is sending us all these pictures from... I think she's in Barcelona right now. Do you guys like that song? Barcelona. Who sings that song? Let's look it up and see. I love that song. Bambolea. Gypsy Kings. Bar Barcelona. George Ezra. Okay. She's sending the family all these pictures. She's in Valen they went to Valencia and then she's in Barcelona. Good time in Barcelona and now we are in Valencia. Time flies. Here are some pictures and she sent all these pictures. And then Alex responded with a TikTok. <laughs> I was the only one up. Everybody else hearted it. I was the only one up because, like, there's no, she's not, you know, like, conceptualizing the time of being in Europe when, you know, we're here. And so, she sent it at 4.37 a.m. Of course, I'm the only one that's up, right? And so, she sent it to us. I said, love you, miss you. <laughs> and, of course, everybody hearts my message. Everybody hearts her message. Everybody hearts the pictures. <laughs> anyway, um, so, yeah, last night, yeah. You know, somebody said I can really tell there's a weight lifted off your shoulders. There's a huge weight lifted off my shoulders. I've been so stressed out and worried about our little dog. I mean, if you guys have pets and whatever, I, I'm sure you totally understand. I don't want to equate it to, you know, people having kids because I just don't think it's the same thing at all. Like, I mean, we love to think of our dogs as kids, and I know people take offense to that and stuff like that, but there, it's just it's just not the same thing at all. Um, 
But I was so worried about little Boo Radley, and like it was really stressing me out, like for a good week. I also had some other things that were stressing me out, like that are going on with friends of mine that I was very, very worried about. And so, which those things resolved fantastically as well. So it was just like the this everything just kind of came together the, the last couple days, and I just feel lighter. I just feel like so much lighter, and um, it does feel like a weight's lifted off my shoulders. I think also. I mean, I've always known this, but it kind of forced me to realize, like, you know, that like, this has been my year of trying to live in the moment. And this is a very valuable lesson. <clears throat> you know, you come on video and you say something like, well, this is my year to live in the moment. And then, like, if you don't live in the moment, it's like there are some people out there that are side-eyeing you. Like, you're not living in the moment. No, I said my goal was to try to live in the moment. I didn't say I was going to be perfect at living in the moment. Like, I don't know anybody that sets a goal and, like, from day one they're perfect on it, right? But, like, that's the expectation when you're online. That if you say, like, I'm going to lose, like, 60 pounds, that you better not ever, like, gain a pound back. That's why it's so important for me to do my weight loss journey the way that I'm doing it and showing weight gain and weight loss and ma maintenance and things like that. Because for me, that's very real. That's what it is for me, you know? And I think that's what it is for a lot of people. I think a lot of people lose a lot of weight very fast. A lot of people gain it back. A lot of people lose it over a long period of time or lose it very fast and maintain it. I think there's all different ways. But this is my story. This is how I'm losing weight, right? And so... Here goes my Amazon truck. I hope to God this is not for me. I don't think I've ordered anything. I don't think I have anything from Amazon coming, actually. Um, oh, no, I do. I have something that I bought to review, and I do think it's supposed to come today. It's like peanuts or something. But anyway, um, you know, it's a good, valuable lesson for me to live in the moment. Oh, she drove by, but she looked like she was slowing down. It was a good, valuable lesson for me of, like, teaching me to live in the moment because what I, you know, I mean... It's so nice to live in a fantasy world, isn't it? <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, it really is. To live in, it's nice to live in a fantasy world. I know Boo Rowley is not going to live forever. I'm completely aware of that. There is going to be the day that we're going to the vet and we're not going to get good news. I know that. I mean, it's, I'm, not, I'm not stupid. I live in reality. That day is going to come. It may come next week. It may come five years from now. I don't know. But what this forced me to do was look at that in the face, right? And go, it wasn't this time, but it could be the next time. It could be 10 times from now. And you can't control that. So this is forcing you to live in the moment. This is, and whether you choose to accept it or not, like I always say, like, what's your options, right? Like when it's forced upon you. Like here, like here's a healthy dog. Like live in the moment and effing enjoy it, right? Like it was such a valuable lesson for me. Like stop borrowing the stress and the worry about all of it. You can't do anything about it anyway. You know, you can't. I do really believe in the power of prayer, but I also think that things are going to happen the way that they're going to happen. I do believe that. There's a God and I'm not it, you know? And, and things, and I don't think God is in everything. I just don't, you know? I think sometimes it's just about an old dog with old dog problems. And I'm not, like, it's, I don't know. I just, it really forced me to learn to, like, in this moment, live in the moment. But he's doing great right now. And I don't know. It's so funny because somebody was like, somebody left a comment. I was telling Alex about this on the vlog. And they said, I feel like they said they had a Cocker Spaniel. So whoever you are, I don't know. But it was like one, only one person left a message about their dog being on muscle relaxers. And they said something about, yeah, but like they just had this kind of like stupid smile on their face. It's exactly, however they explained it in the comment, is exactly how Boo Radley is. And they were like, yeah, they just always have this stupid, stupid smile on their face. Like, I think they were high. And I was like, I think Boo Radley's high. Like, I think that's what it is. But, hey, more power to him. Like, if he is and he's happy, he's not feeling any pain. I can tell you that right now. I mean, he is jumping around and all. I mean, he is happy from the moment he gets up. The one thing that's kind of weird is, like, at night, like, he either sleeps, like, he is deep sleeping or he just lays on the end of the bed and he stares at that blue light. Like, he is so fascinated by that blue light. I don't understand what it is. I said to Alex, and Alex is like, well, do you want to want to turn it off? And I said, no, because I want him to be able to see on the floor, you know? And um, he's like, well, do you want to try a different color? And I was like, I, we can if you want to. But I said, I just think he's... He doesn't understand it. Like, he just literally just stares and looks right at the... Like, he stands at the end of the bed, like, the, like lays sideways, and he just looks at the end. It's like this. <laughs> like, the light is speaking to him. It's very, like, poltergeist. So, last night I laid down and I took a little bit of a nap, and then when I got up... Like, Boo Radley, this is one thing I do notice right now that's different from how he was. I mean, he's always kind of been a little bit this way, like a very nervous dog, but... 
a lot of nights he would sleep straight through the night. Um, since he's been in pain and all this has been going on, it's like if I move or I mean I've been almost kind of like afraid to move at night because I'm like if I move he jumps out of his bed immediately and then he does like four rounds of the bed on the bed and then he comes back to his bed he gets in it then he jumps out I mean that's like it's like a whole like 20 every time you move or he gets like woken up or whatever it's like it takes him like a good 20 minutes to like come back to the bed and then he comes back in the bed and if you move it's like the same thing and this is all night long. Even with the pain medicine right now, he's doing this. He's always kind of been like that, but it didn't take as long as it's taking him now. So, I got it from my nap, and the battery stopped while I was picking at my eye. I have had to, like, change my contacts, like, three times in, like, the last week and a half. I don't know what's going on with my contacts. I'm excited for my glasses to come here. But I ordered them from Ray-Ban, so I ordered these new glasses from Ray-Ban. And you can either, like... I was telling Nikki about this last night, and I was telling Tanya too. Like, when you order, like, you can order the frames and the lenses from Rayman. I just wanted to try it from there. If they don't work out, I'll just buy the frames and have my eye doctor do them. I, but I wanted to get them quicker, which is, to be honest with you, it's like very like Warby Parker. And so you order them up there, and then you can upload like your prescription, or you can type it in. Next to that's the best way. And so I tried to, like, type it in, but, like, it didn't have all the options for, like, my stigmatism and stuff like that in my one eye. And so I didn't, so I, like, uploaded it, and then it said fine, but then I got an email, and it said, are you wanting readers or single vision? And I said, single vision, and then they were like, okay, and now they're on their way. So I don't know. These glasses might be effed up. They might just be screwed up. They might not be good at all. Um, I'm going to be really sad. I got the Club Master, like the sunglasses that were stolen from me. And I got another pair of those sunglasses too. Because I love those sunglasses so much. And incidentally, both the frames and the sunglasses were on sale for uh, last weekend. So they did this like week and a half long Labor Day sale. I think the sale's still going on actually on Ray-Ban. So I got them for like, I got them like $100 off. Hold on a second. You know when you pull up your Google and the first thing that comes up is Sister Wives, you know you're in trouble. <laughs> um, Ravian has so many cute... Let's see if the sale is still going on. They have so many cute frames and sunglasses and everything. Uh, it doesn't look like the, the sale is still going on. No. Mm -mm. It's not going on. But my sunglasses were like $110 off. And my frames were cheaper too. My frames were like $100 off. I couldn't believe it. Um, I got like an email code and it was like this big sale they were having. So, I was really happy about it because I was going to order them anyway. But I'm excited about the glasses coming because the time that I didn't wear contacts when I had the herpetic eye thing, that if, whenever I say herpes of the eye, Tommy's like, don't call it herpes. I'm like, well, that's what it was. <laughs> I mean, it's what it is. You know, you have herpes on your lip and it's herpes in my eye. And so... Uh, I think it's so funny. She's like, please, that, that's so gross. Stop call. I'm like, Tanya, it's like a herpes. Like a, She's like, you don't even say that. You say cold sore. I go, okay, well, it's like a cold sore in your eye. But during that like week and a half or two weeks that I didn't wear contacts, I was just wearing glasses. I really, really enjoyed wearing glasses. One of the things is like, it was interesting because I was talking to Nikki. Are you going up there? <clears throat> what are you taking up there? Oh, okay. I'll have to come up there for that. Everybody's going up there. Oh, it's 4.52. Um, it's till like 7, so I've got like two hours. <clears throat> but, um, I was telling Nikki this last night, because both Nikki and I are nearsighted. And she wears glasses all the time. She said she doesn't like to wear contacts, but she wants to try them again. And she was saying, like, reading glasses, like, don't really help her. And I go, well, when I take, like, if I don't have my contacts in... Unless you have, like, the exact same... Because, like, Nikki and I were not making sense to each other last night having this conversation. And I didn't really understand why until I was like, oh, because her prescription's so different than I, mine. And probably her... I mean, it was stupid. It was like, why wasn't this occurring to us sooner? And her reading glass prescription is probably different, too. So, like, I'm nearsighted, but my prescription's not that bad. It's, like, negative 2.75, I think is what my contacts are. And then my reading glasses are 1.50, okay? So... 
she's like a lot. Like she takes her glasses off. If I took my glasses off, I could see like if they walked out of their house, I'd be like, oh, I can. That's my neighbors on the corner right now. I could see what she, I could see. She had a dress on with like blue flowers on it. It's like white with blue flowers. But I couldn't see like her facial features and stuff like that. I couldn't read the numbers off the mail books. But I could see like enough to be like, oh hey, like that's so, so and so and whatever. With when I take my glasses off. I don't need my reading glasses because I'm nearsighted so I can see everything so it's like I don't that was great I didn't have to wear my reading glasses to read to watch shows but to watch shows was a little bit different because my iPad was out far enough that I was kind of like having to wear my glasses then wear my readers over the glasses oh, I didn't tell Nikki to do that last night and try that oh, I didn't tell her that last night so with my contacts because my contacts corrects my vision so then my vision's like it's normal well with normal vision I need 1.5 reading glasses what is going on? I hear everybody talking up here. Everybody's going to this annual pool party. I'm going to have to make an appearance. My neighbor across the street, she's not. Her nephew and his wife are over there visiting for Sunday supper. <laughs> and uh, Sunday dinner, she said. And she was showing her her garden and stuff like that. There's like four cars in her driveway. They're wanting to make an appearance of like, we're so busy we can't go to the annual I know that that's what they're doing. <laughs> and trust me, I will be giving her a hard time for it in a jar of mayonnaise. So anyway, um, but I was telling Nikki... There's a hawk that's going over here right now. Do you know what's so weird about that is that, did you know that when you, like, see a hawk and a hawk is, like, um, I mean, this hawk is, like, right over our house, like, right over their house. That is so weird. It's just circling over their house. Do you know that when a hawk circles, it's a veil between the living and the dead? I was told that years and years and years ago. I should look this up. A sense of blessing and affirmation. Harmony and balance to your... Okay, hold on a second. Veil. <laughs> I know I was told this. Between living and the dead. A message is coming to you. Well, the reason I heard that was because I had a friend of mine whose son died years ago, and he was out of town when he passed, and he was golfing, and a hawk was circling, and then he got the phone call that his son had passed away, and he ended up getting a tattoo of a hawk because he felt like the hawk was like, and he looked it up, and somewhere it said, but I guess maybe it was like a messenger, but I remember him telling me that the hawk meant that it was this, a veil between the living and the dead, like it was a sign between the living and the dead. Anyway, um... About the glasses thing. It's silly to have this long conversation. I'm just, to be honest with you, I don't love my Warby Parker glasses. And so, when I get these new glasses, like, Alex wants to get some different kinds of glasses, too. I'm excited about wearing a pair of glasses that I'm excited about wearing, if that makes sense. And then, I might not wear my contacts all the time. I might wear my glasses. All these people are going out here. She's carrying chairs. She's taking stuff. I don't know that lady very well. She plays pickleball, though. She's in the pickleball league because she always walks back with all the women. She's carrying a box. She must have cookies or something. I'd love to see somebody straight up carry a crock pot right down the street. That would just totally make my day. That is so this neighborhood. Um, the other guy, my favorite, my favorite neighbors, he was, she must not be going because I haven't seen her today, but he was riding his bike down there. So he must just be making an appearance. But she was the one the other day that said that she was going to go. So I'm excited about the new glasses coming because I really want to try them. Okay, so last night, took Boo Radley out. He ran all over. He was I mean, this dog was hyped up last night. Not like anxious. It was, it's totally different than the night that he was pacing. Um, that night was like manic pacing. And like, he just was like, he just didn't, it, it just, something seemed so off to him that night. Um, this was not that. This was just trotting, 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 eating a little food, trotting, trotting, trotting. Then he come and look at me and that's like a sign that he wants to go outside and go potty. So I take him outside again. I did it like three times while I started watching my show. Gave him treats. Finally, he, like, got him upstairs, and, like, he started going upstairs, so I went upstairs, got him into bed, and, like, he, like, walked right in and, like, curled up in his little purple bed. So, then he slept until I came to bed, and I came to bed late last night. I mean, it was, like, it was, like, 6.15 when I went to bed last night, because I'm trying to get done with the show, and he slept all through the night. And, um, 
So I went to the bathroom, I took my contacts out, and like brushed my teeth and stuff and washed my face. And when I came out of the bathroom, there he is sitting on the very corner of the bed just looking at me. <laughs> like, okay, I'm, I'm up, let's go. <laughs> so, um... I took him outside. Now, our vet the other day told him, told us, she was like, if he's not sleeping through the whole night, to help him, like, be able to fall back asleep, give him a half of, so he gets two doses of the gabapentin a day, like, one in the morning and then one, like, 12 hours later. So she was like, if during the middle of the night he's having a hard time going back to sleep, give him, like, a half of a dose of the gabapentin and then, like, something that will help him fall back asleep to get him through the night until he gets his morning dose. Well, he usually gets his morning dose at around 7 o'clock, 7.30 in the morning before Alex leaves for work. But since it's a weekend, I knew that I was taking him out and it was 6.30, so he probably wasn't going to go back out until like 9 or 10 o'clock. So that was when he was going to get his dose. So I gave a little, I just, I think it was like a half of a half. And um, brought him back upstairs. He was so funny. Okay, so at first, <laughs> he's like walking all around the bed, right? Then he would come and he would like just walk right over his purple bed. He was walking all over Alex. I was telling Alex to stay out because I was just like laying there sideways just like watching him do all this stuff. It was so cute. Then he would come over. Boo Radley loves to have his underneath his chin rubbed. So this is how I know that he's back to normal. So he would come over to me. I mean, he could see me watching him, right? So he would like walk all over the place and then he'd come over to me and he'd go, <laughs> like scratch my chin. So I would and then he would like walk around again. He walk just uh, he hasn't done this ever like just walk over his purple bed. Like he usually walks steps in it and then he just walked right over it. <laughs> right over Alex, well, over that side of the bed. And then he'd sit down for a second and he'd go <laughs> It's just like he didn't know what to do. And I thought, oh, I, I hope this gabapentin kicks in because this little guy is like I can tell he's like up. He's been sleeping too much is probably what it is, you know? So, um, so anyway, so it was so funny because at one point he starts pushing his bed, like he wants it like closer to me. He starts pushing his bed like up, like with his head. And I don't remember him ever doing this. This is kind of something that like Tucker and Pee Pee would have done. I don't remember him ever doing anything like this. Then he's sleeping under the bed, under the purple bed, okay? Then he gets up after about 10 minutes of doing that. And I was kind of turned sideways and he curled at the end of the bed around my knee, which was under the blanket. And then he thought he was out. He fell asleep. And so I was like, okay, I can't move. I can't move at all. <laughs> so today, um, he went outside, like, I mean, so many times and was run out. And then when we were getting ready to go to brunch, like, half an hour before that, Alex had taken him out again. And so he came upstairs, and he was, like, running in and out of the bathroom. We were, like, brushing our teeth and getting dressed and whatever. And, um... I, like, put him on the bed, and he, like, curled into his little purple bed. I mean, he was asleep in, like, ten minutes. This huge just... Oh, it's one of them stink bugs over there. <laughs> one of them stink bugs. He was out, like, in ten minutes. Like, we went over there to kiss him, goodbye, kiss him goodbye, and he was, like... I mean, he was completely out. So, the little guy obviously needs some rest today. But, I mean, he's still healing. Oh, there's a huge spider over there, too. What is going on? I wonder if that spider's getting the stink bug. I don't think so. Nature. <laughs> nature. That's nature for you right there. That that I need to start a nature YouTube channel. I just film stuff like that. The spider. It's a big spider. Got something in his web over there. Web of lies and deceit. Oh my god, it's that stink bug. It's oh there's another spider. Was that that the spider's attacking the stink bug? Oh my god. I know people are like, you should go save it, you should go save it. I'm like, no, he's like circling it. It's like the spider is like circling the stink bug. Oh, the stink bug got away. Now the spider's just standing there looking there like, what's he going to do? Where'd the stink bug go? He, like, fell through the thing. The spider's just sitting there like, what happened to my food? Your food got away from me, girl. <laughs> anyway. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, and today, um, I'm going to go inside. I told Alex, I was like, watch whatever you want to watch. I'm binge watching the hell out of Sister Wives. I don't even know what to say about Sister Wives. I mean, they spent an entire season of Christine leaving. That was all season 17. Or season 17 was all about Christine leaving. And how pissed off he was. I don't know if I said this yesterday. I think I did. But, like, Robin's just an idiot. I mean, she's just straight up an idiot. They have a scene where they're sitting around. And it's when Christine decides that she's going to tell the Sister Wives that she's leaving. Because Cody's like, she hasn't even told the Sister Wives she's leaving. No, she's checked out. She could care less. And so, Christine's sitting there and she's like, well, I'm divorcing... Cody 
and then, or I'm leaving Cody, or breaking up, I don't know how she says it, but basically she's leaving Cody, and then she's like, and I'm moving to Utah, Truly and I are moving to Utah, and she's like, so I won't be here anymore, she goes to this whole thing, and they ask her all these questions about like, well, when are you moving, I don't know, in a couple weeks, I'm gonna put the house up for sale, I mean, she's moving, right, well, they've all bought this land together called Coyote Pass, We're, I almost call him Charlie, Charlie, <laughs> that's from Sweet Dreams, Charlie, the end of it, Patsy Klein. Um, but his name's Cody. <laughs> Cody and his five wives. His hair's his fifth wife. Anyway, his hair got, is getting so bad. Anyway, um, I don't know why he just doesn't cut it short. It would look so much nicer short. I hope that maybe, well, I've already seen the picture, so I know he doesn't come back from this season with short hair, but he's just cut it all off short. It would look so nice. This one episode, well, I'll get to that in a second. So anyway, he... She's like, I'm leaving Cody, I'm moving to Utah, truly wants to be around people, I want truly around people that love her, and she's like, says something about like, somebody says, what does this mean about my other sister wives, basically meaning like, Robin, Janelle, and, and Mary, well she's like, well, I'm really close with Janelle, but I don't really have relationships with any of the other adults in the family, so I probably won't stay in that close of contact, I mean, they have it out during this conversation, okay, 20 minutes into it, Robin looks at her and she goes, so does that mean that you don't want to build on Coyote Pass? I'm like, girl, are you an idiot? Like, she's divorcing Cody and moving out of state. Like, no, she's not building a house on this stupid-ass property that you all do. It's just so stupid. And then, what was the scene with Janelle that I just was like... Well, I love, so, the scene where she's in the apartment and she tell, I mean, she goes off on Cody. And he goes, no, I'm not going to listen to you. I mean, he's like a kid. It's so weird. And Robin just acts stupid all the time. Like, she doesn't ever know anything. And her eyebrows just get darker and darker. And she's got the same hairdo that she had 15 years ago when the show started. And it's just too much for me. And, um... What does he say to Robin or Janelle? What did I want to say? I mean, some of the things that, like, he says to these women, I'm like... I mean, it's, the thing is, is that I don't even know why Mary stays, honestly. I, she's gone now, I know that. But, like, I don't know why she stayed so long. And he's, he even says it, like, in his confessionals, which you know she sees back because they watch the show. She watches the show back, right? And he goes, I don't even know why she stays around. He goes, I don't even want a relationship with Mary. <laughs> what? He had wanted to be in plural marriage for years. He wanted a TV show, and he wanted Robin and her kids. And what I don't understand about it, like, what I really don't get it. Oh, this is what I was going to say. Janelle says, they're having this lunch, right? And Janelle says, I still have affection for you. Okay, this is probably one of the grossest men on the face of the earth. No true story. Okay, and it's not just, I mean, it's everything. But it's really about his attitude, okay? Like, how, how he treats these women and just he's so arrogant and whatever. But he goes, I mean, I know she, like... It's all physical for her because of my rock hard abs and my pecs. And I'm like, dude, listen, okay? You are not that hot. I just want to tell you right now. I think you think you are, but you're not that hot. He's like, yeah, I mean, it's not, he's not even joking about it. I mean, he's like dead serious. And she like, so then they like, he must have said something about it at the lunch, but they kind of like scan over it. So then they show her in the confessional and she's like, yeah, that's really not it. Like, it's, I mean, they haven't had sex, I don't think, since their last kid was born. Like, I mean, he says we've never really had a marriage. And what's so interesting to me that I don't really understand, and I don't know, like, maybe I'm just not at the part where they address it. But, like, I remember back in the day, the wives describing Robin as his trophy wife. Because what? Like, are we basing this on weight? Because I think, like, they all, physically, in their faces and things, and what they bring to the table is, they all bring different things to the table. So, what we're talking about is, because at that point, the other three wives are, like, struggling with their weight, they're in the gym working out, they're trying to lose weight. And so, what they're talking about, because they say, she's so thin, she's his trophy wife. Well, he constantly is talking about his rock-hard abs and his pecs and wanting to work out and all this, this kind of stuff. And so, I'm like... So he must very much, it's weird with a lot of this religiosity stuff, I have to be honest with you. It's so weird that a lot of it is so circled around physical perfection to them, like in weight and things like that, equals spiritual perfection. And I mean, this is across the board in a lot of shows. Um, Welcome to Plathville, they discuss that a lot. 
um, The Way Down, that cult out of Tennessee. Do you guys remember that? That woman, like, she, her was like, losing weight was next to godliness kind of thing. I mean, there's a lot of, like, correlations between this stuff. And I think he really has an issue with a lot of these wives gaining weight. Um, but he won't come out and say it. But what I really don't understand, unless she's the most submissive, passive wife that will do whatever he wants to do. But what's interesting to me is that publicly online, unless they've just done it for the television shows, and I don't read the blogs, I don't read a lot, I mean, I've read the articles to find out what's going on, but she, like, on, on the show, she stands up, Robin stands up to Cody quite a bit. So, but then she also is like, I don't know why they're all mad at me, blah, 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 I don't know. Girl, cry me a river. I'm so tired of Robin. But anyway, um, what's so weird to me is, why was Robin the one that he picked? I don't get it. I don't get, understand why it was Robin and her kids, like, that he picked. Like, what made her the magical wife? Like, what is it about her and the kids? Is it because they, they depended on him? They needed him? Is it because of what he thinks she looks like physically? Is it because she was the most passive? Does anybody, I mean, for those of you that watch it, I know, like, Stacey watches it and a couple of other people watch it. Has this come out? Like, am I just not there yet? Am I going to find out tonight when I catch up? Like, what is the reason why it's only Robin that he wants to be with? I don't understand it. I personally don't think she's that much of a catch. And her kids are okay. I mean, they're boring at best. I mean, they really don't. I mean, when you look back at the kids that really brought something to the table on this show, it is not Robin's kids at all. I think they're sweet kids. I think they're nice. But they don't really bring anything to the table at all. And so, as far as the show. So, I don't understand. Is it because they needed him so bad? And they're dependent on him? And Cody has to have people that are dependent on him? <clears throat> I mean, in season 17, he started talking about this patriarchy. And Janelle's like, I did not sign up for this. And she, he's like, yes, you did sign. And like, in the confessionals. Well, this is the other thing, is that they say, uh, are there a lot of people up there? Yeah, there's probably 20 or so. Okay, I'll be up there in a second. Um... What's so weird to me is that they don't ever say anything to each other. They say things in, like, the confessionals behind the scenes. There's so many times that, like, they don't, they won't say anything to each other's faces. Like, I have so many notes in here about stuff that, like, one of them will say, and I'm like, I witch his sister down here because I'm like, oh, I think I'm going to, oh, her nephew's leaving now. Somebody's walking down with a chair and things like that. I have these notes. I have so many notes for each of these seasons. Um... It's like, Mary... Okay, I was thinking the whole time with the conversations with Christine. Like, he isn't even fighting for her. He isn't even trying to keep her. And with Janelle, he's like... And so then Mary and Robin are talking, and, he, and they're like, he didn't even fight for Christine. But nobody says that to each other. Christine doesn't say it to him. Mary and Robin don't say it to him. They don't say it to Christine. Nobody says it. Then with Janelle... He says, like, do you even want to be part of this anymore? Like, are we done? And then later she says, um, why does she think I'm singing the breakup song? Because you are singing the breakup song, Cody. Like, in the, in the confessional, you say, why does she think I'm singing the breakup song? Like, I want to stay with her and work things out, but you're pushing her out the door. Like, you don't want to be around her. You ain't seen her kids in five or six months. They, like, documented that on the show. I don't know if Cody Brown forgets that there's a show called Sister Wives, but they document that he hasn't seen his kids for six months. He never even brought Savannah presents. He bought Robin and his kids... Well, he bought them, like, these scooters and helmets and all this kind of stuff for Christmas. And then and uh, went to the school to meet the kids. I mean, Gwendolyn watched that, like, live and was, like, crying. I saw all about that. But, like, he buys Robin and his kids all this stuff. And Savannah didn't get one Christmas present. Not one. She didn't even get a call from her dad. She didn't get a text. Gabriel didn't get a birthday t call or text from his dad. His dad called him to ask him about COVID, but he didn't call him and ask him anything else. I mean, so it, somebody's got to explain to me. I mean, I already knew that he can't have relationships with his older kids at all, but he just can't. He doesn't know. I mean, his, his excuses are ground. Like, they need to deal with it on their own. Like, somebody explain to me, please, why he specifically picked Robin. Like, what is it about Robin that is greater than all these other women? I don't understand it at all. Except for that, the commonality between Mary, Janelle, and Christine is that they're very independent women. And that was one of the things that made the show so attractive from the beginning, right? Was because they were polygamists that didn't really follow this patriarchy where let's bow down to the man and do everything that he said. And I think that over time, because they started visiting all these polygamous families and all this kind of stuff, Cody's like, I want to be the king of my castle. He's even said those kinds of things. I want to be like the king of the kingdom. Like, you guys need to respect me. He always refers to Robin as being like the most loyal. It's so crazy to me. I don't even understand it. 
I would never be with a man that way. Never. It's ridiculous to me. If she comes out in this garden and they are leaving, I'm going to tell her she needs to go to this annual pool party. I'm going to say, listen, you need to get you some mayonnaise. <laughs> you need to get you some good mayonnaise. So anyway, I watched that show all last night. And um, yeah, I got 11 episodes. Well, I got 12 episodes with tonight's episode. But I can do it. I can't believe it. Like, it seems so surreal to me that I'm at the end. Like, it seems so surreal to me. So these are the shows that I have to pick from next. See, this contact is really bothering me. And I just put them in, like they're new ones. I just put them like two days ago. I think yesterday or today. Or yesterday or the day before. Okay, binge, shows to binge watch. Yellowstone. I don't feel like I'm ready for that one yet. Grey's Anatomy is 20 seasons. Probably 21 by the time I watch it. I'm gonna do that next summer. Sugar, I don't really feel like that right now. Goodbye Earth, I could do that. Good, uh, Dead Boy Detectives, Alex told me he didn't think I'd really like it. The Veil. Tanya liked The Veil. I, I don't know. Deliver Me. Real Housewives of Miami. I feel like I need to kind of walk, go back and watch these shows. This is maybe what I'll do. I'll go back and watch these shows I need to catch up on. Real Housewives of Miami. I have one season to catch up on. Is he showing his toys off or something like that in the garage? I can hear them over there talking. That's some, so something he would do. He'd be like, Peter, come over here. <laughs> Let me show you my new vacuum that I got. He always shows me the cat food that he orders on Chewy. He swears by that, like, Chewy website. And he always shows me, like, the discounts and the prices and stuff like that. Um... Why does that sound so soothing to me? I could probably watch a 45 minute ASMR video if I was just like sitting here, just that sound that ooh, ooh. It's like sounds of the neighborhood. I love a lawnmower. Oh my God, I love the sound of a lawnmower. Not when I'm like trying to film videos, I don't like the sound of a lawnmower. But like if I'm inside, I mean, cause like the landscaping people when they come in, I'm trying to film. But like if I'm just sitting out here, oh my God, like just going through my phone and reading a book, the sound of a lawnmower, I love that so much. So Real Housewives of Miami, I've got one and a half seasons to watch. To catch up. Oh, I've got, no, I've got seasons four, half a season four, and all of season five to catch up and, and be, like, watched every season. Did y'all hear that Nicole's not coming back from Miami? Um, but, I'm not, it's her choice that she's not coming back. She said she's struggling with postpartum. I think it'll be good. Um, I love Nicole on the show. I really, because Alex is like, do you not, I said, I think it's a good decision. And he's like, you don't like Nicole? I said, no, I love Nicole. I think she's too real for the show. I think she's too real. Um, Below Deck, Mediterranean. I mean, I think they're all real, but, like, I think... I was kind of surprised Gertie came back, if you want to know the truth. I, I thought Gertie was too real, too. I, I thought she just was, like, enough. Below Deck, Mediterranean. I have half of season five. That's the season that Hannah gets fired. I have, I have season six and season seven. I'll probably go back and watch that and Miami interchangeably. That's probably what I'm going to do while it's still warm. And I'll probably watch some that out here. Um... And then Ozark will probably be the next series that I uh, binge, other than, like, like an old series. Um, this is Us. Handmaid's Tale. A wait, fall, winter for that. Um, Dexter. Game of Thrones. Sherlock. The 100. The End of the Effing World. A Man in Full. Hollywood Con Queen. I don't really want to watch them and take that off my list. People told me that wasn't really that good. Where am I at on time? People told me that wasn't really that good. The new look on Apple. I don't really care about that either. Well, maybe. That's for the fashion designers. World Beyond, that's the last. What did somebody just tell me that just started? <gasps> the Old Man, I need to put that on my list. The Old Man, it just started on Hulu again. I love that so much. Oh my God, so my friend at Patashu, her son loves ramen. So I sent, I gave her today when we were in there, the ramen, you can't really see it, hold on a second, it's like, I gave her eh, the ramen from the Hello Kitty ramen, and she took it home, and her, it's a picture of her son holding it. Her, cause I, so I ordered this Hello Kitty ramen, but it was like chicken, and I think I thought that I like canceled the order, but I must not have, and so it came anyway. It's like it's like six of these 
ramen cups that are Hello Kitty. And so I was telling her about it, and she was like, because I was going to give it to one of my neighbors for the grandkid, and she was like, oh my god, she's like, my son, her son's in ninth grade, it's her youngest son, she's like, he loves ramen, like he's the ramen expert. And I was like, well, I'll give you the Hello Kitty, if he, would he eat it? And it's Hello Kitty, it's like chicken noodle soup. She's like, he would love it. So, I took it in there and gave that to him. Okay, so my list of bench, shows to binge watch, okay. The World Beyond, it's my last Walking Dead show to watch. And then Elsbeth, Reacher, Mayor of Kingstown. I might go back and watch Elsbeth the first season. I've heard a couple people say that. Columbia, Broad Church, In the Dark, The Bear, Station Eleven, Travelers, One of Us is Lying. I don't think I'm going to go in and watch that. That got canceled after two seasons. And the first season was so completely different than the book. America's Sweethearts on Netflix, which is about the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. Interview with the Vampire. So many people recommended that to me. I'm waiting until October to watch that. The Leftovers, Harper's Island, Prison Break, Criminal Minds, The Strain, Outer Range, Umbrella Academy. I'm like, where am I at on time? I got 10 seconds. Should we count it down? Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. I can't believe I'm at an hour already. Okay. Umbrella Academy. Alex told me he thought, he was like, one day he was like, I don't think you would like it at all. Then the next day he was like, I think you would really like it. Okay, I'm going to go back and watch Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I've never watched it. I think I've maybe seen like one episode ever in my life, maybe two. Should I go back and watch Buffy the Vampire Slayer? Okay. Uh, Twin Peaks, The Accident on Netflix, that's new. Dark Winds, I really, oh, Dark Winds might be the next one I watch. I really want to watch that. La and Lady in the Lake on Apple. Dark Winds is two seasons. It's coming out with a third season, I think. Lady in the Lake is one season. It's like six episodes. Oh, The Secret Lives of Mormon Wives. I can, oh, I can, hold on a second. I can check mark that one. Okay. And then Mayfair of Witches, Mayfair of Witches and Discovery of Witches, Virgin River. I had forgotten about that. I want to watch that and The Old Man. So give me any other shows that you think I should add to this list, but those are my shows that I'm going to binge watch. But I think what I'm going to do is to just get caught up on all my shows, I think I'm going to go in and watch back and forth Below Deck Mediterranean, get those seasons done. I love that show. I love that show so much. I think this week or the next week is like, I think it's, we've got two more episodes left because they're going to do their last charter and then the final episode. So we've probably got two weeks left, two or three weeks left. Um, and then this season of Below Deck Mediterranean is going to be done. I love that show so much. So I'm going to go back in and watch that and then Miami. And then when I get caught up on that, I'm going to probably go back in. Oh my God, one of our friends today is a server at Petashoot. She's going back and watching all seasons of Survivor. Okay, this is flashing red, so the battery is, it's almost going to die. So let me get off here. I hope that you guys are having a magically amazing Sunday. I hope that you have a fantastic beginning to your week tomorrow. I, this is going to be, oh, this is going to be a great week for all of us. I'm just putting good positivity out there in the world. Um, I hope that you're having a magically amazing Sunday. I hope that you're getting relaxed, refreshed, rejuvenated, and renewed for the week ahead. Do something fun today if you can. If you have to work, I hope that you get a little bit of time to relax. And if nobody else told you this today, I love you guys, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Love ya.